All right, hopefully this works. What is up, y'all? Um, practice is over. Uh, well, first off, James from Chimerica Enterprises. Uh, chilling in my Airbnb right now. Just uh, been relaxing for a bit. Gonna go pick up some dinner in a few minutes. Found a really good pizza place that's cauliflower crust pizza. So that should be awesome. Um, yeah, let's... Uh, I want to talk a little bit process. Um, not just for this practice session, but just in general. Um, this right here, obviously I always like when I'm bowling and I'm recording what I'm doing, I've always got my iPad with me, or I usually do, um, just so I can keep track of scores and, you know, but track stuff in pen pal and then just move it over to my phone later. Um, but there's something, I don't know. I find something, what the heck is, oh, I forgot about that. Um, I find something very therapeutic about just sitting down and writing stuff down with a pen and paper. Um, it's a very good way to just kind of, for me to focus a little bit more and kind of think through what I was learning. And like, you know, I, I was just working through this a few minutes ago before I turned the camera on and it... I already know everything that I wrote down. I didn't learn anything new from it. It's just kind of reinforcing, kind of distilling thoughts down more than anything else. It kind of helps me to think things through a little bit more. I actually started, I started this idea of kind of having a paper journal of sorts that I carry around in my bowling backpack uh, when I was, when I was first looking at possibly dropping my storm contract. And this is, this goes back probably, what, two years, I think. Um, it's just kind of a, uh, it's just a way to unplug and just kind of be there, just like me, my thoughts, pen, paper, and just kind of scribble out thoughts, even just as a reminder to think about later. So I was just doing that a little bit and kind of thinking through what I learned and kind of what I went through and what I observed today. Um, like I mentioned earlier in the, uh, in my preview video, this is, a lot of learning on the fly for me. Um, very, you know, new to me center. So I'm learning all of that on the fly, um, as well as a pattern that I've never bowled on before, even though I have bowled on patterns like this in the past. Um, and so actually I think it might be, might be good to just kind of start at the beginning. Um, so this, hopefully you can see this okay. And I don't, I'm just editing all this on my phone, so I can't really do a pattern chart overlay. Um, this is the pattern that we were on this weekend. Uh, this is 2024 PBA Dick Weber 45 fit. Like I said, uh, I'll have a link for this down in the description as well if you want to take a look at it yourself. But 45 feet long, um, 28.6 mils, which is a decent amount of volume. Not like super flooded considering it is 45 feet. And it is split pretty evenly between forward and reverse. So those are kind of a couple of the key data points that I'm going to be looking at immediately when I pull up any pattern chart is length, total oil, and the forward reverse split. More forward means it's going to hook more, more reverse means it's going to hold up longer. Um, the other really interesting thing, and this is a little bit, a little unique for the PBA pattern library, I think, is look at that bottom chart there. Um, and you can see really the pattern is only flat from, I think that is, 13 on the right side to like 14 left side or something like that. So it's very, there's not a whole lot of flat in the middle. And then the taper, which is kind of the gap between where the, where the high volume ends and where the low volume starts essentially. Like it's just one gradual blend right there all the way out to the gutter. Um, it's not a very, versus like, if you look at a, uh, where's, oh, here we go. This is actually a really good counterpoint. So this is PBA Dragon. You can see it's a much sharper drop from where the flat is in the middle of the lane to where the um, flat is on the outside of the lane. So something like Dragon is going to kind of force you to play one specific breakpoint zone. But when you see really wide tapers like this, that's usually going to make things a little more interesting because that means that there's going to be multiple different potential paths to success, at least on paper. And 
that can be a good thing because it lets a lot of people kind of, you know, different a lot of different plans of attack could be in play on the fresh. Where that can also be a little bit of a bad thing, and this was kind of what I struggled with on the fresh today in the practice session, is it is an incredibly undefined pattern. There is not one spot of hook you will always have on the fresh. There is not one spot of hold you will always have on the fresh. And so that was the first 15, 20 minutes of the practice session was honestly pretty rough because I was trying to figure out how to get my ball to pick up in the right spot in a place that is, in fact, very high friction HPL overlays. Um, chalk looked terrible on the fresh, although I may have been a little too far to the right. Um, and really, my, my starting pair is not that great either. Uh, lane 17, I think, is the tightest lane in the entire building. And 18 is not. So, like, they were... Oh, gosh, they were probably four or five different, at this, like, within three minutes of turning the lights on for practice. So, surviving game one tomorrow is going to be key. Like, I don't want to shoot... Like, sure, if I shoot 250, awesome. I just don't want to shoot 160. Um, so, that was, like... Finding a way, like, you know, we're, we're going to get, there's four to a pair, so I assume we're going to get 10 minutes of warm-up tomorrow. Um, finding a way to really create something for myself in 10 minutes of four to a pair, um, I have a hard time seeing that being a reality. And so really, you know, I'll do a little bit, you know, I'll try and break them down a little bit more to the right, but, you know, especially considering that they... Um, Considering that there's a good amount of track friction, I'm just going to try and kind of break down the track area a little bit more and then probably just kind of get just left of that on both lanes if I can and just kind of like survive. I'm not, you know, it's, I think once we get past like game, get into like game three-ish, um, realistically, I think it should be a lot easier to, there should be a little more defined like, general concept of lane play across the building and once the track develops and I can kind of move a little left and get into my wheelhouse of kind of bumping it off that track you know down near the end of the pattern and just essentially have more of a trough to throw at um so yeah just kind of looking looking over notes at this point um 3.0, my 3.0, uh, the Widow 3.0 actually looked pretty good on the fresh, um, especially on the hooking lane on my starting pair. Not great on the tight lane, but I'm not sure anything's going to look good on that lane. Um, chalked, it had a little bit of surface on my Envy Tour, but nothing insane, and that looked decent. I, well, not a little bit of surface, like a light thousand grit on my Envy Tour, so like I didn't crush it like I did in Wichita, but it's definitely not shiny at the same time. So, um, I was able to get those through the fronts okay. Um, probably going to have to loft on the fresh if I had to guess, just to kind of, because getting really, really gritty surfaces down, like, into the fronts, especially on the, as a righty, just really seems like a non-starter. So, it's almost like if I want to throw a surface, I have to throw it over the fronts a little bit more. Um, so, that's... Kind of the general thought there, uh, 3.0 was decent as long as I didn't chuck it way to the right. But at the same at the same time, I think there is enough free hook on 18 that it might be okay for that. Um, I tried, and I'll I'll inter I'll drop a shot in here. That was my hammer effect, which is five inch up, like a lot of my gear that I brought this weekend. Um, that's on the that's on my starting pair for tomorrow for qualifying. It looked all right, but I mean, you can see like even though yes, it struck, but it's not really. It, it didn't feel like it was ever using energy in the right spot, uh, front to back. So that's that's a ball I'm going to keep in my back pocket if I do need a lot more core torque. But at the same time, on the fresh, it didn't really feel all that awesome. Um, or fresh slash close to fresh. Um, I don't know. It, and the the other part of it is, like, my other cleaner balls. Like, you know, Theorem, GB4 Hybrid, 
My GB5 actually looked okay. So that's that's one that's definitely going to go out on the fresh tomorrow. Um, Theorem might as well, just in case everything is hooking. But otherwise, probably just going to control the lanes with... Try, try and control the pocket as best as I can. I'm definitely going to take all of uh, 3.0 Envy Tour and my Extreme Envy uh, out with me on the fresh. And this is where it gets a little interesting. Is, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking around about... This is probably 40, 30, 45 minutes into practice. And I'm looking around and like, nothing's hooking in the right spot. I'm just like, I'm having to fight to manufacture anything. And so I grab my Extreme and I walk into the shop. I had like probably 2,000... Uh, a moderately fresh 2,000, I think. Or no, I hit it with a 1,000 grit at Sport League last week. So yeah, I was 1,000 grit and a few games of lane shine. So still pretty gritty. And took it into the pro shop and had them crush it with a 4,000 pad. And that actually looked really good. Um, these couple of shots that I'm going to show right here... Those few shots were on a pair where I moved over to the high end and the track was really, really developed. And I was able to just kind of, you know, walk it off of that, but still get it through the pins correctly. Um, didn't really have a chance to throw it on fresh again, which, you know, everybody was bowling all at the same time and there was no, there's no re-oil in a practice session. So kind of what you got is what you got. But at the same time, I think the fact that it was kind of able to get through the fronts a little easier but then still kind of, you know, walk off of it and go through the, like, I was striking at will if I was anywhere close to the pocket with that ball for like 15 minutes. And so that's kind of got me thinking that that shape is actually looking really, really good. Um, and then off of that, my pin down top speed seemed to be very, very workable. And, you know, kind of where, where the effect was giving me some angle issues, my, which is, you know, the effect is five up. My four and a half down top speed actually kind of let me play a little more of the control game, um, which does kind of fit my eye a little bit better, um, at least in this specific situation. But at the same time, you know, tomorrow is a different day. It's going to be a rerun after what they gave us today in the practice session. And it's going to be more reruns over the course of the weekend. So this is all just kind of my general kind of notes that I'm taking, things that I'm thinking through of, okay, what am I seeing? You know, how are they changing? The fronts went away very, very quickly on the fresh. Um, so I'm expecting them. And you can actually, if you go back and watch those shots with the, especially that last shot with the extreme, uh, you can actually see how dried out the, the lane is from like 12 to 18, 20 ish at the arrows and just this entire funnel of, hard friction essentially you'll have to get away from so i expect it'll probably we'll probably have to get left pretty quickly um in light of that tomorrow and so my my main thing at this point is make sure that i'm manipulating speed properly to get my ball through the pins instead of you know stay, staying on top of it and jamming it harder with speed and using faster stuff to then help it make the corner um stability like stable shapes and soft speed and keep and rolling my hand a little more forward seem to be much more beneficial and more much more consistent I should say than creating a bunch of side rotation and you know creating push that way um with that said this was a practice session where people are trying all kinds of crazy stuff and tomorrow is going to be a lot more organized and so I expect there to be a lot more consistent transit I, I expect there to be a lot more transition pair to pair in you know our eight game block than what i saw today and i expect that it'll also be a little more uniform especially once you get past the first two or three games so yeah lots to uh lots to think about lots to process um like i said i bowl at 8 30 tomorrow morning so um yeah gotta get make sure i get a good night's sleep tonight and Oh, good. I got time to go get pizza. So, so yeah, um, not going to say I won the practice session. I definitely didn't lose the practice session. And, you know, I, I was able to kind of reinforce some stuff I've been working on physically. And I learned a lot and found some stuff that worked and found some stuff that didn't. And 
realistically, I can't ask for a whole lot more than that. Um, plan tomorrow is just keep it simple and hit the pocket a bunch and hope the hits come. Uh, pin carry doesn't seem super tough at this building, so in that sense, I don't think I'll be fighting that too much, which I think will be a good thing. Um, I'm a little more comfortable when I have a really good, uh, I mean, well, most people are, but I, when I have predictable pin carry, I'm more comfortable. Like if I can hit a pot hit, like if I see where the ball's going and I already know what it's going to do and it hits the pins, I'm more, I'm already more happy. Um, just from a mental cycle process perspective. So, so yeah, um, should be a good day tomorrow. Um, for now, get some pizza, maybe find some ice cream later and yeah, we're living life. So thank you all for watching. Uh, like I said, videos for the rest of the weekend will be live next week. Um, I'll probably have this go live. Eh, I'm not sure if I'll get it up tonight. I'll probably put this up tomorrow morning if I had to guess. Uh, probably like 10 a.m. Central. So as you're watching this, I will probably be in like game two or game three of my qualifying squad already. So anyways, uh, in the interim, thank you all for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, uh, if you enjoy this type of format or you think this format's really stupid, then let me know down in the comments and we can either fight about it or I'll take the compliment. So your choice, it's whatever. Um, but yeah, till then, adios. See y'all out on the lanes. Good luck and good bowling.